Salamu alaikum. I swear to you, if you watch this segment all the way to the end, you will be in a much better position to learn about the Quran than 99% of the people. And you will understand why perhaps there is a narration that reportedly claimed that our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, read Surah Yasin upon your dead. I don't think, however, he meant that you should stand by the side of the grave and read Surah Yasin because as the Quran says, those who are in the graves don't hear. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي In this segment, inshallah, we will identify Jibreel, we will reveal the identity of Jibreel and we will talk about his 600 wings. Are they real? The answer for sure will surprise you. In this segment, we also provide five major disclosures with irrefutable Quranic proofs. This is a really heavy segment and I suspect that people will want to watch it more than once. Just reflecting on the Marvelous Quran channel, there have been several landmark segments and series that we have presented already, such as about Zulkarnain, about who frowned Abasa, which is from Surah 80, how to understand the Quranic dhikr, the stories and parables, about the story of Isa ibn Maryam, about Al-Mahdi and As-Sa'a, about the lies that were concocted about our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, surrounding the events of marrying Zainab and the supposed accusations by the Quran against him. And we cleared our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from anything to do with that story. And then eventually we got to the companions of the cave. In today's segment, inshallah, we're going to have another major landmark. You cannot afford to miss any part of this video, but please do not criticize or ask questions about details unless you have watched all the way to the end of the video. In this segment, as I said, there are five major disclosures. We're going to start with a brief review of Ayat 36, 20 to 28 from Surah Yasin. Of course, this is the last part in the series on Surah Yasin. We're going to also ask who is the man in Ayat 36, 20 to 28, who is addressed in Surah 94. Hint, it's not Muhammad. This is Surah Alam Nashrah Laka Sadrak. In the books of Tafsir, they taught us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was addressing our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muhammad in that surah telling him Alam Nashrah Laka Sadrak. We will see inshallah, this is not true. The answer will surprise you and will provide major keys to answer the question, who is Jibreel, which we will do inshallah, and we will provide exclusive markings, meaning irrefutable Quranic proofs, proving what we conclude in this segment about the identity of Jibreel. We will also talk about who is Mikal. We will also talk about Ruhul Qudus. And as promised, we will talk about Jibreel's 600 wings. Are they real? Is there any evidence to explain to us what those wings really mean? And finally, a conclusion is not to be missed. So as usual, I would like to remind you, don't assume that you already know what these ayat that we're going to share today in this segment really mean. Remind you that we make extensive use of the nested interpretation technique, the Abrahamic locution, tafsil, all are part of the organic Quranic methodology, which we extracted from the Quran. If you're not familiar with how we engage the Quran, this may not be the first segment to start with. However, if you decide to watch it, please keep in mind that there are several techniques and aspects of extracting evidence from the Quran with which you may not be familiar. In that case, please watch a lot of other videos on this channel before you get to this segment. Definitely, I urge you and advise you to watch YT93. Yes, it's a long segment, but it's a very essential segment. While we're at it, I would appreciate it if you support our website by visiting www.marvelousquran.org. Also, if you are not a subscriber to this channel, I would really appreciate it if you click that like and subscribe button. And then inside the subscription page on the channel, there's a red bell button. If you can click that so you receive immediate notifications of anything we talk about. All right, we get started right away with a brief review of Ayat 36. 20 to 28 from Surah Yasin. I'm going to put up the translation in front of you so you can read it. As you see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَجَاءَ مِنْ أَقْصَى الْمَدِينَةِ رَجُلٌ يَسْعَى قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ اتَّبِعُوا الْمُرْسَلِينَ اتَّبِعُوا مَنْ لَا يَسْأَلُكُمْ أَجْرًا وَهُمْ مُهْتَدُونَ وَمَا لِيَ لَا أَعْبُدُ الَّذِي فَطَرَنِي وَإِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ أَأَتَّخِذُ مِنْ دُونِهِ آلِهَةً إِنْ يُرِدْنِ الرَّحْمَنُ بِضُرٍ لَا تُغْنِ عَنِّي شَفَاعَتُهُمْ شَيْئًا وَلَا يُنْقِذُونَ إِنِّي إِذًا لَفِي ضَلَالٍ مُّبِينَ إِنِّي آمَنْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ فَاسْمَعُونَ قِيلَ ادْخُلِ الْجَنَّةِ قَالَ يَا لَيْتَ قَوْمِي يَعْلَمُونَ بِمَا غَفَرَ لِي رَبِّي وَجَعَلَنِي مِنَ الْمُكْرَمِينَ 
وما أنزلنا على قومه من بعده من جند من السماء وما كنا منزلين. So as we explained in YT 145 when we provided the full translation to Surah Yasin and from outside the community of established order, meaning outside the group who follow the deen, the basic instructions from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a man who seeks to engage in the scripture repented and came forth. He said, oh my community, follow the way to connect with the emissaries. Follow those who don't ask you a recompense and they are seekers of guidance. And what excuse do I have for not worshipping in the past, the one who exposed me to the correct path and to whom you will be returned to resume your mission? So he's reminding his community of following those whom Allah sent with some knowledge and information and divine guidance. And then he says, is it right or was it right for me that I take intermediaries to him as deities? If Ar-Rahman intends for me some harm, their pairing with me, meaning their conjoining as a Qareen, will not provide a substitute for me to protect me against Allah at all, nor can they save me. Indeed, I would then be in a clear aberrance. So we continue and we will see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided a good conclusion to this man. It says, Indeed, I have believed in your Lord, so listen to me, listen to me. Meaning he was providing a teaching role to them. It was said to him by Allah, of course, enter the concealed abode of privileged understanding. He said, I wish that my community would develop evidence-based knowledge. I wish that my community would learn and actually increase in evidence-based knowledge given from the divine source. Knowledge about what? Knowledge of what path and instruments my Lord granted for me to use to reconnect with him despite my prior errancy. And how he thus remanded me, how he, Allah, remanded me to be among those to whom the soft-spoken emissaries, meaning the angels, speak. So he developed the ability to receive from the angels by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he wanted people to have the evidence-based knowledge, not only about him, but about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala endowed him with and favored him with in order to receive divine guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the concluding part of this same paragraph, and after him being part of the legions provided you, meaning this is one of the emissaries sent to Muhammad sallallahu him, that man, we brought down no divine legions bringing any guidance upon his community. So he was the last such emissary to his own community. More specifically, he was an emissary bringing knowledge from the abstract understanding, in this case, meaning the Torah, and we never intended to do so, after you. So you're the last Nabi to Bani Israel. This man was from Bani Israel and he brought this type of knowledge to them. And he brought that knowledge in the form of being sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a soft spoken emissary. Jun, divine legion. So this ayah is teaching us that he was the last such soft spoken angel type of emissary from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach people about the Torah. We're going to see a lot more detail, inshallah. Again, for full explanation and full detail about Surah Yasin, please refer to segment YT145 on this channel, inshallah. All right, so a few important reminders before we dive into the detail related to Jibreel. Bani Israel are the group of people who escaped with Musa from Fir'aun. They are not the ethnic group referred to as the descendants of Yaqub, as almost all the books of Tafsir claim, and as they have learned from biblical sources, as you all know. For more detail, please refer to segment YT125. It details a lot of information about Bani Israel. Who are they? What is the definition of Israel, etc., etc. One more reminder, Muhammad Sallallahu was the last Nabi, meaning prophet, to Bani Israel. He was not a Nabi to the followers of the Quran. Never was he intended to be a Nabi to the followers of the Quran. As a matter of fact, the prophethood system expired. And with the Quran, we have access to direct divine guidance from Allah. There's no need for an intermediary or a person in between who brings knowledge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us. We can go directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala using knowledge about the Quran, engaging the Quran, doing tadabbur and reflection on the Quran, and access the truth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to share with us. So for us, Muhammad was a Rasul, a messenger. For Bani Israel, he was a Nabi. 
Again, for full details, please refer to YT 134, 135 to understand the difference between Rasul and Nabi and what it means for us that our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a Rasul, a messenger bringing the Quran to us. So now we ask the question, who is the man in Ayat 36, 20 to 28? And for that, we're going to look at some markings. Markings, as you remember, are specific expressions that are repeated in two different places in the Quran. Specific. And if they are exclusive, meaning only applicable to one similar subject, that means this is a very strong marking. And it teaches us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not put this marking, this link, this cross Quran link, by coincidence. There are no coincidences in the Quran because a coincidence is the result of action by an imperfect being, whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intended every word, every expression to be exactly in this right place and to provide the exact semantics that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to learn. So with markings, we can detect easily who was the person who was referred to in this paragraph. This marking in here, Bima ghafara li Rabbi, Musa is mentioned by name, and we are told Allah granted him a reconnection. Where is that? In Surah Al-Qasas, Surah Al-Qasas, Surah number 28. Allah tells us that he, Musa, after participating in a crime, which we will see a lot more detail about later, inshallah, he said, Rabbi inni zalamtu nafsi, faghfir li, faghafara lah, innahu huwa al-ghafurur rahim. He, Musa, as I said, after participating in a crime, said in a supplication to Allah at a time after the murder was completed, O oh my Lord, I have transgressed against myself. Grant me then to reconnect with you. And he, Allah, granted him a course of action to reconnect with him, for verily he is the one truly capable of reconnecting with his wayfarers, and he is merciful. Please pay attention, I have transgressed against myself. He just participated in a crime where a person was killed and he's saying, I've transgressed against myself. Please reflect and think and you will know exactly where we're going with this reference. But for now, we have a marking that shows us clearly that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ghafara, he granted reconnection to this person in this paragraph in here. And thus we understand that the person referred to in this paragraph is none other than Musa. Of course, there's a lot more evidence that we're going to share and we're going to understand more about this paragraph and you will see why Surah Yasin, because of this paragraph, as well as because of other parts of Surah Yasin, is such a critical and important surah in the whole Quran. Another marking is that Allah tells us, this person said, Ja'alani min al mukramin He remanded me or he made me among those to whom the soft-spoken emissaries speaks to receive the divine guidance through the angels from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is an indication that he was a Nabi. He was a messenger, so to speak, sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to people. So what he asked for was not that his reputation gets vindicated or that he receives some special distinction from people. He asked that his community get to learn all the ways and the path and the instruments that he had to follow in order to be granted connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a really critical aspect of this whole story. This person who was Musa, as we said, did not ask for something special for himself. He asked that his community is also taught and also receives the same guidance directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him reconnection with him and how he made him, Musa, among those addressed by the soft-spoken emissaries. It's a beautiful sentiment and it's a very selfless sentiment and it's a dua that he made in here, Ya layta qawmi ya'lamun, that will influence a lot of knowledge that we will see in the Quran. Of course, part of answering this request, Ya layta qawmi ya'lamun, so that they receive direct guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, direct connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Qur'an itself. Part of the answer to that supplication is the Qur'an. And then it says, وَمَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ And we have not revealed after him, after him, meaning him being part of the legions provided to you, O Muhammad. We're going to see why. We have provided no legions. We have brought down no legions like him. Therefore, he was part of the legions, part of the malaika. He was Musa and he was also part of the Malaika? Yes, exactly. This is exactly what we're going to see. And some of you already know where we're going with this segment. So these legions, Malaika, and he was the last of them to his community, not to other people necessarily, but upon his community. 
yours too as a Nabi Muhammad. Remember, Muhammad وسلم, was part of the community of Bani Israel and he was a Nabi for them. And therefore, and we have talked about this in so many different segments before, and therefore he was bringing guidance to them regarding moving to the Quran. And therefore, the answer to this supplication that this person made, Musa, was to bring to his people a connection to the new scripture, to the new revelation, the Quran. So after him, upon his community, there were no more divine guidance, Mursaleen, divine guidance sent through the Mursaleen from the abstract understanding, meaning from the Torah. Because remember, Bani Israel had the Torah as their scripture until the scripture expired. So no more angels after Musa was providing knowledge to his community as part of the angels, Mursaleen. And this shows that the Torah itself expired because Allah is no longer providing any divine guidance using it. We have said so many of these things before in so many different segments. This is nothing new. We're just reviewing a little bit. So there is an exclusive marking in here that we need to study regarding this concept. Was Musa bringing knowledge to our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the form of an angel? Now, in a prior segment, we explained exactly that Malaikat Al-Arsh, Malaikat Al-Arsh, the angels that affect our Veltanshung, are Shuhada wa Nabiyyin. And we've seen this at the end of Surah Az-Zumar. Surah 39, and we've explained this in a full segment titled, How to Talk to Angels. Now, here we're introducing the concept that Musa himself is Jibril, is the person who actually brought not only divine guidance to Muhammad, because Muhammad was a Nabi, but he also brought the Quran itself. We're going to see, just be patient, there's a lot of detail, a lot of information, and you're going to see it with your own eyes using irrefutable evidence, using this exclusive marking that I talked about. So here we saw, وَجَعَلَنِي مِنَ الْمُكْرَمِينَ Allah remanded me among those to whom the soft-spoken emissaries speak. Now we need to review a little bit this concept, the soft-spoken emissaries. We saw this first in Surah Abasa, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the Quran and about the Surah. كَلَّا إِنَّهَا تَذْكِرَةً فَمَنْ شَاءَ ذَكَرَةً فِي صُحُفٍ مُكَرَّمَةً مَرْفُوعَةٍ مُطَهَّرَةً بِأَيْدِي سَفَرَةً كِرَامٍ بَرَرَةً Nay, this surah is an exercise for you, the reader, to exert an effort into remembering someone you should remember. And we've talked about this someone in that series when we talked about Surah 80, Surah Abasa. And whosoever chooses to do so shall remember him. In that case, the designee whom you should remember. And that was the person who died 100 years, if you remember. For he is mentioned in purified tomes, meaning the Quran specifically, that are exalted and protected by angels, by the hands of angelic emissaries, brought to us by the hands of angelic emissaries, B.A.D. Safara, Kiramin Barara, who are themselves purified, soft-spoken, loyal, and scrupulous, like the Abrar. So in this paragraph, we already see soft-spoken, loyal, and scrupulous angels are bringing the Quran. But there's a lot more. In Surah Al-Haqqa, Surah 69, Allah tells us about the Quran itself. إِنَّهُ لَقَوْلُ رَسُولٍ كَرِيمٍ وَمَا هُوَ بِشَاعِرٍ قَلِيلًا مَا تُؤْمِنُونَ وَلَا بِقَوْلِ كَاهِنٍ قَلِيلًا مَا تَذَكَّرُونَ تَنْزِيلٌ مِّنْ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ it, the Qur'an, is the speech of a soft-spoken emissary, and it is not the speech of a poet. How infrequently do you believe? This is addressing some people who are supposed to believe. And neither is it the speech of a divinator, kahin. How infrequently do you seek to see your comprehension, meaning do you remember or work on remembering? Why is this so relevant? Because qawlu rasulin kareem should trigger the memory of those people. Here specifically, Bani Israel. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us this Quran is qawl rasulin kareem. And this qawl should specifically trigger some memories for them. In other words, this Quran is bringing some knowledge that should trigger their memory. Who? Of course, Bani Israel. Because this is not talking about Quraysh at that time. Quraysh did not have a written track record. Bani Israel did. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, this Quran is tanzilum min rabbil alameen, repeatedly disclosed in portions successively from the Lord of all the realms. And it is a reminder, tadakkarun, a reminder. It should see the comprehension. It should give you something to trigger your remembrance and your comprehension. 
and it is described as the speech of a soft-spoken emissary. This is really critical because we're going to see another exact marking in Surah At-Takwir. إِنَّهُ لَقَوْلُ رَسُولٍ كريم. It, the Quran, and as we explained in a prior segment, it is also the breath of dawn, meaning the new memory that comes in in the morning when you wake up, the dhikra, the same concept. It is surely the speech of a soft-spoken emissary. Here in this ayah, ayah 44, 17, we have a clear explanation who that soft-spoken emissary is. Who is Rasulun Karim, who is mentioned in these three ayat and is referred to in the paragraph from Surah Yasin that we looked at. In this ayah 44, 17, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّا قَبْلَهُمْ قَوْمَ فِرْعَوْنَ وَجَاءَهُمْ رَسُولٌ كَرِيمٌ and we have already tried before them the community of Fir'aun, tried meaning provided tribulations and trials and challenges and difficulties to the community of Fir'aun. And there came for them a soft-spoken messenger or emissary. وَجَاءَهُمْ رَسُولٌ كَرِيمٌ The exact same marking in here, Rasulun Karim, is referred to as إِنَّهُ لَقَوْلُ رَسُولٍ كَرِيمٌ إِنَّهُ لَقَوْلُ رَسُولٍ كَرِيمٌ Showing us without any doubt that the Qur'an about which these ayat are talking is the speech of Rasulin Kareem, meaning brought through the speech of Rasulin Kareem, from whom our beloved Wasallam heard the Qur'an and learned it. So here already we have a clear answer to our question, who is Jibreel? Jibreel is none other than Musa returning as an angel and teaching our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But there's a lot more that we need to investigate and to explore, and we're going to continue. So here we ask, is the Qur'an really described as qawl or the speech? And there is tons of evidence to this. We're not going to dive into a lot of detail. We're just going to share three ayat from Surah Al-Qasas, Surah number 28, where Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala tells us explicitly, وَلَقَدْ وَصَّلْنَا لَهُمُ الْقَوْلِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَذَكَّرُونَ Just like we saw up here. Kalla innaha tathkira. It's a reminder for people who are supposed to have such reminder. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَلَقَدْ وَصَّلْنَا لَهُمُ الْقَوْلِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَذَكَّرُونَ Indeed, we have successfully linked the speech. The speech, it's talking about the Qur'an. For them, perchance they remember. So what does that mean, linked the speech? This is a direct reference to the markings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed inside the Qur'an. We talked about this when we talked about Surah Ar-Rahman, and we use this technique of looking for these markings every time we study and engage the Qur'an in order to understand the Qur'an, in order to allow the Qur'an to explain itself. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, we have allowed al-qawl, the speech, the Qur'an, to be linked. Of course, it's talking about the Qur'an. الَّذِينَ آتَيْنَاهُمُ الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ هُمْ بِهِ يُؤْمِنُونَ Those to whom we have allowed to learn the kitab, the scripture, before this one. So clearly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is talking about the Qur'an itself. And here it's making a reference to the one kitab. One kitab, as we said, Injil is not that. It is the original Torah that was given to Musa. الكتاب, those to whom we have allowed to learn the scripture before it, meaning before Al-Qawl, before the Qur'an. In it, they believe. In the Qur'an, they do believe. Why? Because they have access to some remnants of knowledge from the older original scripture. And whenever it is restricted upon them, they profess, we believe in it, for we recognize it as the truth from our Lord. And indeed, even before it, we had surrendered ourselves to our Lord. And here is a clear factor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us about how to recognize the truth. In order to recognize the truth, you start by being submitters, Muslimin. This is a verb, not the noun. It's not about the label of those who claim they are Muslimin. No, submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Submitting to the fact that any truth comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So first you submit to that fact, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide you to recognize the truth when you see it. So I hope it's really clear. Al-Qawl refers to the speech, meaning the Qur'an. So therefore, وَإِنَّهُ لَقَوْلُ رَسُولٍ كريم. It is the Qur'an that's speech brought by Rasulin Kareem. And this ayah in here clearly indicates Musa being that Rasul Kareem. So now we already have a clear evidence that Jibreel is Musa. Perhaps the books of Tafsir didn't understand the concept of returning as an angel, and therefore they did not talk about the fact that Jibreel is Musa. 
Now we're going to see more evidence. Here's a special dua that Musa made, as you remember, when he was assigned by Allah originally to go to Fir'aun. Idhab ila Fir'aun innahu tagha. This is the context, the original mission that was given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Musa. So the Quran tells us in Surah Taha, Surah number 20, starting at ayah number 24. Idhab ila Fir'aun innahu tagha. Qala rabbi shrah li sadri, wa yassir li amri, wahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. وَاجْعَلْ لِي وَزِيرًا مِّنْ أَهْلِي هَارُونَ أَخِي أُشْدُدْ بِهِ أَزْرِي وَأَشْرِكْهُ فِي أَمْرِي كَيْ نُسَبِّحَكَ كَثِيرًا وَنَذْكُرَكَ كَثِيرًا إِنَّكَ كُنْتَ بِنَا بَصِيرًا قَالَ قَدْ أُوْتِيْتَ سُؤْلَكَ يَا مُوسَى So this paragraph is very important because we're going to learn a lot of things about Musa and we're going to see how Musa made a dua that enabled him to become Jibreel, to become the angel, the conduit, so to speak, through whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides guidance to the Nabiyeen. Pay attention. This is not to all mankind, just to the Nabiyeen. So Jibreel was a special emissary to the Nabiyeen. So let's look at this dua, which I use, as I said, at the beginning of every segment on this channel. He, Musa, said, my Lord, splay my breast, meaning open up my breast, meaning metaphorically grant me open-mindedness so that I may understand and receive the divine guidance. And this is why I make the dua and I encourage you to, to make the dua every time at the beginning of segments on this channel. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri and make my cognitive abilities ready for my undertaking. Which undertaking? The undertaking he was about to undertake, which was the new mission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go to Fir'aun because he has been excessive. وَحْلُلْ عُقْدَةً مِنْ لِسَانِي And untether any false conviction in them due to my locution. Who are them? You will see in the very next ayah, he says, يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِي So that they understand my speech. So who are they? They are the people to whom he is sent. So Fir'aun and his community, as we saw above and as is very clear in here. اِذْهَبْ إِلَى فِرْعَوْنْ إِنَّهُ طَغَى and part of the mission is for him to speak. Because Musa had a specific locution, lisan, he's asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to untether any false conviction in them that may be triggered by the locution he uses. Remember, Musa was raised among his community back in Misr, and therefore he spoke the same locution. But that locution may trigger false convictions. So Musa is asking, وَحْلُلْ عُقْدَةً مِنْ لِسَانِي Untether the false convictions that may be due to my locution when I talk to them, in them, in their own minds, break those false convictions away from the locution so that they understand the proper locution from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that they don't remain trapped in their old ways of thinking, which is directly connected to the locution. So this is a very philosophical ayah right here. And Musa is saying, break up the connection between locution on one hand and the erroneous convictions on the other hand, so that his community understands and so that he becomes more open-minded and by extension, they become more open-minded to receive the new guidance. So all of these ayat are beautiful confirmation of so many things that we've talked about on this channel. يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِي This is so important, so that they understand my speech. Now remember, we said the speech often refers to the Qur'an itself or to the scripture in general. Here, يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِي This is a dua that he's making for himself to provide understanding, fuqh, to his community. Guess what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted that dua and provided him the designation to bring this understanding to his people. Only once? No, as we will see repeatedly. Now the dua continues, and this is really interesting because we're going to see it in the next page when we deal with Surah 94. min ahli, Haruna akhi. What is this talking about? And render for my benefit the bearer of responsibility, meaning the true culprit for the crime of killing a young man. Remember in Surah 28, there is a very famous scene where Musa entered the city at night and he found two people fighting and he joined in the fight and that young man ended up being killed. We were taught by the biblical sources and by all the books of Tafsir that Musa is the one who killed the young man. Here he's making a clear dua, render for my benefit, for the benefit of my reputation, the bearer of the responsibility, meaning the true culprit for the crime of killing a young man. 
Who is the bearer of responsibility? Who is the true culprit for the killing of the young man? Haruna Akhi, very clear, right there in the Quran, it tells us exactly who the real culprit is. And Musa is saying, let him be the bearer of responsibility, the one who carries the burden for that crime. Remember, in the original story in the Quran, Allah told us that Musa escaped from Nusr right after that crime. So therefore, he did not have a chance to defend himself. And as a matter of fact, we know from Surah 28, Surah Al-Qasas, that his own community wanted to kill him. But here, upon his return back to Nusr to help his community, he was assigned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go to Fir'aun this time, not just to his community. And that's where he made this dua. So he's saying, part of easing my mission, part of making my mission doable, allow my reputation to be cleared by bringing out wazir. Wazir doesn't mean just minister or a political appointment. It means the one who carries wizard, who is actually carrying the true responsibility for whatever is being discussed. In this case, waziran, the one who carries the responsibility, he is one from my old cohorts, and he is the bearer of responsibility, the true culprit for the crime of killing that young man, which Surah 28 talked about. And he's clearly spelling out exactly who that person is. Harun, my brother. But then he continues, Ushdud bihi azri. Strengthen with him my band of supporters. What does that mean? That means bring him into the fold so that he becomes part of my group of supporters. So that he's not an enemy, but he would be a supporter of mine. وَأَشْرِكْهُ fi amri And make him a partner in my future undertaking to Fir'aun specifically. Because this ayah is specifically saying, اِذْهَبْ إِلَى فِرْعَوْنَ إِنَّهُ طَغَى Later on, inshallah, when we discuss the story of Harun in future segments, you're going to see that this was a specific request just for that mission. And then the dua continues, كَيْ نُسَبِّحَكَ كَثِيرًا وَنَذْكُرَكَ كَثِيرًا إِنَّكَ كُنْتَ بِنَا بَصِيرًا So that we, Bani Israel and I, apply your way abundantly and engage your dhikr abundantly. Indeed, you have already provided us much insight. So therefore, Musa is avowing the fact that they used to do dhikr and they used to apply tasbih, meaning apply the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not abundantly in the past, but now he's asking for additional support to bring his community to go back to doing the right things abundantly. Indeed, you have provided us much insight. He's not denying the favors from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon him and his community, but he's saying in order to do better, I'm asking for this help. Among which, among which, to give me a way so that they understand my speech. So Allah answers this dua, this long dua. Allah said, you have been allowed to learn how to ask correctly. قَدْ أُوْتِيْتَ سُؤْلَكَ أُوْتِيْتَ فَرَمْ آتَ That means he was allowed to learn correctly. Where was he allowed to learn correctly? When he went from Masr to Madian and he brought back al ma and that mat with the ard, with the dry ard in Misr, became clean. We explained all of this in the series on Isa ibn Maryam. So he became capable of fashioning the dua. And this is part of the definition of clean. The Quran is beautiful with its imagery and its metaphorical language. So Allah tells him, you have been allowed to learn how to ask correctly, O Musa. You have already learned how to make the right dua. What does that mean? That means Allah accepted this dua and made that dua part of reality. Part of reality was for Musa to ask that they understand his speech, his speech. And therefore, in this dua, we learn that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Musa part of the future way through which Bani Israel, his qawm, his followers, would actually achieve understanding and acquire divine guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the role of Jibreel. He came back again and again to Bani Israel to keep teaching them through the various Nabiyun after the Torah and therefore became Jibreel. The last of such Nabiyun was our beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He was a Nabi for Bani Israel and Jibreel was teaching him part of the Quran in order to provide the evidence and the direct instructions to Bani Israel who lived around Medina at that time. I hope the image is becoming crystal clear and we understand exactly the role of a Nabi for our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had nothing to do with the followers of the Quran. The followers of the Quran follow 
Ar-Rasul, meaning the messenger, meaning the message itself, the Quran itself, direct connection through the Quran to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Quran is Ar-Rasul. The Quran for us is the messenger. I hope this is also really clear. So again, one more confirmation. Musa did not kill the young man in Surah Al-Qasas, Surah 28. It was Harun. We're going to see a lot more detail about this. And we're going to understand the exact details of the story about Harun in a future segment. Suffice it to say, as a quick evidence for you to remind yourself regarding this issue, Harun was the real killer, not Musa. We know in the Quran, when Musa confronted Fir'aun the very first time, Fir'aun never ever brought up any accusation that Musa killed a young man. I know that in some ayat of the Quran, it appears that Musa himself is blaming himself. We will see all the detail and we're going to understand exactly what part Musa had in that crime and what part Harun had in that crime. But as I said, when Musa approached Fir'aun to invite him back to the right way, as he was instructed to do at the beginning of this dua in here, Fir'aun himself never blamed Musa for the killing. And that would have been a very easy way to dismiss Musa and his whole mission and his whole set of claims instead of suffering all of these calamities that they suffered, which the Quran told us about. Fir'aun never dared to blame Musa of killing the young man. So this is a clear indication that Musa is not the one who killed that young man. That was a parenthetical, just small bit of information. We're going to come back to this, as I said, in a future segment. So now we dive, as promised, into Surah 94, Surah Ash-Sharh. They taught us, they taught us in the books of Tafsir, that this Surah is about Muhammad. Alam nashrah laka sadrak. Did we not splay your breast figuratively to understand and receive the divine guidance? We will see with clear detail, with the clear markings, using the organic Quranic methodology, that this surah is not about Muhammad, but it's about Musa himself. How do we know? We just saw the dua, Rabbi shrah li sadri. This surah starts with, Alam nashrah laka sadrak. The exact terminology, almost exclusive throughout the whole Quran. There are a couple of other ayat that don't talk about specific individual. This ayah in this surah clearly tells us this is referring to the dua that Musa made. So you're thinking, wait, wait, this surah is addressing Musa in the Quran? Exactly, because he was Jibreel, because he was engaged in the enterprise of bringing and explaining the Quran to our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We're going to see more evidence, more information about this. But this is the beginning. Alam nashrah laka sadrak. Did we not splay your breast, figuratively of course, to understand and receive the divine guidance, to have the open-mindedness to receive the divine guidance? وَوَضَعْنَا عَنْكَ وِزْرَكَ And we have unburdened you. What did he ask for up in the dua up here? وَجْعَلْ لِي وَزِيرًا مِّنْ أَهْلِي Rendered for my benefit the bearer of a responsibility, the true culprit for the crime of killing the young man from among my old cohorts. This is what Musa made the dua for. So in this surah, وَضَعْنَا عَنْكَ وِزْرَكَ We have unburdened you. What does that mean? That means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought enough evidence to prove the innocence of Musa and to show that the real culprit was Harun. That wizard, that burden that he had before he returned to Masr had corrupted his reputation behind him. أَنْقَضَ ظَهْرَكَ This is not talking about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Clearly, it is laden, full of terminology and markings that link this surah to the dua from Musa in Surah Taha, Surah number 20 that we saw above. وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ And we have exalted your dhikr. Where? In the Qur'an itself. The Qur'an is full of references to the story of Musa. More than 136 times mentioned by name and dozens of other places where snippets of his stories are referred to or mentioned and dozens of other ayat where he is mentioned by other name. So therefore, Musa, a.k.a. Jibreel, had a lot of references about him in the Qur'an. And therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ We have exalted, elevated your dhikr. فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرًا For indeed, with difficulty, there is always an opportunity to receive divine guidance. In line with your cognitive readiness. In line with your cognitive readiness. This is why you have to constantly keep working on your cognitive readiness. And allow the angels of Arsh, the Weltanschung, to repair your Weltanschung and to help you get ready for receiving the divine guidance. 
But usually this divine guidance comes with challenges. As they say in English, where I trip is where the treasure is. And therefore, every time we run into an obstacle, we should stop and reflect and think this is a challenge. This is usr. It is a little difficult for us to understand. Don't give up. In the ma'al usri yusran, when you ask properly, the angels of the Veltanshung will immediately rush to your support by the permission of Allah. By the permission of Allah, they give you the knowledge that you need. It may take a while, it may take days, sometimes weeks, sometimes even months and years. It depends on your readiness. But if your cognitive readiness is constantly being maintained and prepared, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easy for you to understand. So this ayah indeed with difficulty, there's always an opportunity to receive divine guidance in line with your cognitive readiness. And the same ayah is repeated twice, the first time for Musa in his real life, the second time for Musa in his afterlife, meaning as an angel coming back again and again and teaching the various Nabiyeen. And then the last two ayat in this surah address our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we will see why. فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبْ And thus when you, Muhammad, are feeling empty. Empty of what? Empty like the core of Musa's mother in Surah 28. وَأَصْبَحَ فُؤَادُ أُمِّ مُوسَى فَارِغًا Her perception became empty, meaning she did not know how to make a decision. She did not know what to do. So therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling our beloved, if you don't know what to do, seek until tiredness. Seek what? Seek through the Quran, of course. وَإِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبْ And to your Lord, direct your longing. Only seek His pleasure. Only seek the meeting of knowledge delivered from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, this surah is a beautiful surah that starts with Musa and give methodological information to our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa to keep busy, to keep busy anytime you feel this longing or you feel this emptiness in your core. You don't know what to do. Run toward your Lord. Irghab, direct your longing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The critical point of this surah is that it is addressing Musa as we have showed clearly with the terms at the beginning of the surah. So it's addressing Musa, that means Musa was listening to the Quran. And Musa also received the confirmation that his community would be able to understand his speech. This is part of the speech to him that his community would understand. So therefore, this is part of the speech of Musa himself. This is part of the Quran, but it's also part of the speech of Musa himself, which was addressed to Bani Israel as well as to the followers of the Quran. So now we have a much better picture of what's going on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted the dua, the supplication of Musa, and he granted him that he be the one to bring understanding to his community, and he brought that understanding again and again in the form of Jibreel, that's how he was mentioned in the Quran, as we will see, and we're going to see more evidence. And he became the repeated teacher of various Nabiyun, all the way to the last of the Nabiyin, our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So beautiful, so clear, so consistent, totally understandable, without any mythology, without any fables, without any false information that contradicts the Quran. Now we continue with one more fact. So we talked about the dua from Surah 20. رَبِّ شْرَحْ لِي صَدْرِي وَيَسِّرْ لِي أَمْرِي وَحْلُ الْعُقْدَةً مِنْ لِسَانِي يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِي يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِي So that they understand my speech. Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us that Musa in Surah 36, Surah Yaseen, made another supplication, another dua. يَا لَيْتَ قَوْمِي يَعْلَمُونَ I wish that my community would have evidence-based knowledge. So he was asking to teach or to provide a way for his community to learn the evidence-based knowledge. Where is the evidence-based knowledge? In the Qur'an, in the Qur'an, Ya'lamun. This is the real source of knowledge. Of course, the old Torah is long gone after it was corrupted. We don't have the original Torah anymore. So therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us an indirect pointer, indication that what Musa was asking for is a final revelation, final scripture in which the evidence-based knowledge is provided to his own community. This is the Qur'an. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted both dua, the one in Surah 20 and the one in Surah 36, the paragraph that I mentioned up above. And he also appointed Musa as the one who brings the qawl for his people to understand. So again, why was Musa involved in the Quran? Because the Quran is part of the ongoing speech to Bani Israel. We have already demonstrated that the Quran documents the instructions and the transition 
from the Torah system, the old system, the Torah is no longer available. In the Torah there was indirect guidance, iwajan, iwajan, an indirection through the Nabiyun that people received guidance. People did not receive direct guidance from Allah. They received indirect guidance through the Nabiyun, the Nabiyun who were authorized by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring such divine guidance to people. That was the Torah system. But the Quran documents the instructions and the transition to move away from the Torah system into the Quran system. With the Quran system, it is described as direct guidance, directly to Allah. فَإِنِّي قريب, Allah says, I am very near to them. فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُ بِي Let them respond to me and believe in me. Directly I will provide them the guidance. The Quran tells our beloved Sallallahu إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتُ You don't guide those whom you love. وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ Allah guides whoever chooses to be guided or whoever Allah chooses for him the guidance. وَهُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِالْمُهْتَدِينَ Allah is the one who knows the true seekers of guidance. So this is the Quran. The Quran is about direct guidance. The Quran describes itself غَيْرَ ذِي عِوَجٍ It has no crookedness, no indirection, no intermediaries needed, no prophets, period. The prophethood expired. This concept is so crystal clear in the Quran. I don't know how they missed it during these last 1400 years that we refer to as the Dark Ages. So here we have a final answer. Who is Jibreel? Of course it's Musa as an angel returning to teach the Nabiyyin. And, and there is one more aspect of his role as Jibreel. It is to bring punishment to the rejectors from Bani Israel. We're going to see why I say this. So he had a dual responsibility as part of his role as Jibreel. So in this role, Jibreel, this is the name of the role for Musa after his life, meaning during the afterlife for him, he would bring back knowledge and teach the Nabiyyin to Bani Israel. And of course, he is the expert. He is the one upon whom the original scripture was given. Makes perfect sense. And he would bring punishment to the rejectors from Bani Israel. And of course, this included his engagement to teach our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the last of the Nabiyyin for Bani Israel. So let's deal with some linguistic analysis now. We're going to start with linguistic analysis for the word Mikal because Mikal and Jibreel are mentioned together as we will see in Surah Al-Baqarah. So by understanding the concept of Mikal, it will help us to understand linguistically, of course, the concept of Jibreel. Mikal is mentioned once in the Quran, Mikal, like Mizan or Mi'ad, both of them are Quranic words. So Mizan from the root Wazana, it means scale for weighing. Mi'ad from Wa'ada, it means to set an appointment or to have an appointment, Mi'ad. It's from the morpheme or the form Mif'al, where the letter Wow is converted into Ya. Sorry, this is a little bit technical, but for the sake of my Arabic speaking brothers and sisters, I need to provide this reference so that they don't ask and question without knowledge. This is the linguistic background of the word. So as we saw, Mikal is a morpheme like Mif'al. It indicates Mubalagha, Mubalagha, the excessiveness, the increased amount of something. So Mi'ad is a very specific appointment between two people at a fixed location, fixed time, etc. There's a lot of specificity to it. Scale, there's a lot of specificity to it. It provides accurate weighing of something. Mikal is someone who submits to a referee from Wakala, just like Wazana, like Wa'ada, Wakala, Mikal. So you say, I don't see the wow in here. It is not part of this word, Mikal. As I said, the wow is converted into a yeah, and this is very typical for words that are hard to pronounce. The Arab will substitute the letter wow with another letter. So here, Maukal or Miwkal became Mikal. So who is Mikal? Mikal is Nuh because he was the very first one, according to the Quran, according to the Quran, he was the very first one to teach that Allah is Al-Wakil from the root Wakala. Al-Wakil meaning the referee in case of dispute. In the story of Nuh, who is the first chronological person mentioned in the Quran to have received direct guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, it's not Adam. And we've talked about Adam as a reference to various different people, messengers, and prophets. Go back to the segment on Adam on the channel. So Adam is not a reference to the very first prophet. 
Nuh is. So Nuh is the very first prophet. He used the word wakil from the root wakala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to him as Mikal. And when his earth life was over, he returned in the form of a teacher, just like later Musa returned in the form of Jibreel. So Nuh returned as Mikal. He's only mentioned once because the stories related to Mikal affect the other writings before Musa. But as far as the Quran, the important character, the important personality who affected the content and the understanding of the Quran is Jibreel. So this is the ayah where the verb tawakkaltu from the root wakala is first mentioned in association with Nuh. So this is Mikal. Now we do the same thing, linguistic analysis for Jibreel, or as sometimes it's said, Jibra'il, Jibra'il. And if you listen to it carefully, it is like Isma'il and Isra'il, very similar morpheme, very similar morphology form. So we understand from Isra'il, asra bi amrillah, he who walked secretly upon the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Isra'il. So Ismail, Asma'a bi Amrillah, he who enabled others to hear upon the command of Allah. He recited the Quran out loud frequently, many, many, many times, and he taught others how to listen, how to hear the soft spoken emissaries to connect directly with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Asma'a bi Amrillah, and he is our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is a descriptor of the role of our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as we have shown in a full segment titled Ismail that you can find on the channel. So Israel, Ismail, now we understand the morpheme. Jibra'il or Jibril, this is a shortened version of the same word. Jibra'il, Jibril, it's a, it really refers to the same thing. It is from the root Jabara wa Ajbara bi Amrillah. He who brings reformation as well as punishment upon the command of Allah. Why do we say this, reformation and punishment? We're going to see. But first, I want to give you a very clear indication, very clear explanation from the Quran itself, who Jibreel is. We don't need to make it up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran. They just did not even reflect or think about this. But in the Quran, again in Surah Al-Qasas, we have seen this so many times already referred to Musa and referring to some aspects about Jibreel too. In the Quran, he is the only person, Musa is the only person who is referred to by anyone as Jabbar from the same root Jabara. He's the only person throughout the whole Quran who's associated with Jabbar, this root Jabara. So therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us a clear indication. He's the only one who is mentioned as Jabbar. Of course in that story, he is referred to as Jabbar by one of the two men who were fighting in that scene that we talked about. And that same person accused Musa that مَا تُرِيدُ أَن تَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُصْلِحِينَ Of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us that Musa became Muslihin among the Muslihin, among those who seek restoration. But Musa was the first person and the only person in the whole Quran to be associated as an active participle with the verb Jabara. So what does the verb Jabara refer to? From Lisan al-Arab, Jabarahu Allah, ay aslahahu, Allah restored him or restored through him. This is the famous lexicon by Ibn Manzur. And of course, as we saw, Musa said in his supplication in Surah 36, qala ya layta qawmi ya'lamun. He wanted his community to be restored, to be reformed, to acquire evidence-based knowledge, which they should have acquired through the Quran and melt within the community of the followers of the Quran. So he says, I wish my community would develop evidence-based knowledge. And also from Lisan al-Arab, there's another meaning, Barra'ahullah. So Jabarahullah means Barra'ahullah, meaning Allah showed his innocence. Of course, Allah showed his innocence. As I said, when Musa confronted Fir'aun, Fir'aun did not accuse him of killing that young man. And he could have easily done that. So therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposed the innocence of Musa in that instance, but also in the Quran. Very specifically in this ayah, ayah 33, 69, it says, O oh, you who believed, do not be like those who hurt Musa's reputation. Adaw Musa. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared his innocence from what they claimed. And he was, to Allah, 
of noble descent. So therefore here in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly tells us, Allah. So he brought out exposure and evidence of his innocence, not only during his life, but also in the Quran. And we're going to see a lot more detail about that scene of killing the young man. And we're going to see how wrong the books of tafsir are in claiming that Musa is the one who killed that young man. Now back to the linguistic references here from another lexicon, from another dictionary, Al-Qamus Al-Muhit by al fayruz Abadi. He tells us, Tajabbar al marid salaha haluhu, the patient recovered from sickness. And as we said, al bari'u min al shay yuqal ana minhu khalawatun wa jubar, from the same root of jabara. So therefore, jabara and jabbar and jibril have all of these meanings. And of course, they all apply to Musa. And the preponderance of the evidence is building with every passing minute of the segment where we have absolutely no doubt left, no skepticism that is deserved whether or not Musa is Jibreel. Musa for sure is Jibreel. And finally, there is an important aspect to the verb Jabara. Jabara ala al-amr ay akrahahu ka'ajbarahu. So to force someone into something. For Musa made a supplication against his own community and watch this and you will understand this is so complementary to the concept of Jibreel. So Musa in this ayah, ayah 88 and 89 from Surah Yunus, from Surah number 10, he said, وَقَالَ مُوسَى رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ آتَيْتَ فِرْعَوْنَ وَمَلَأَهُ زِينَةً وَأَمْوَالًا فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا رَبَّنَا لِيُضِلُّوا عَنْ سَبِيلِكَ رَبَّنَا طُمِسْ عَلَىٰ أَمْوَالِهِمْ وَاشْدُدْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ فَلَا يُؤْمِنُوا حَتَّى يَرَوْا الْعَذَابَ الْأَلِيمِ قال قد أجيبت دعوتكما فاستقيما ولا تتبعان سبيل الذين لا يعلمون. So Musa said, Our Lord, you have allowed Pharaoh and his notables adornments, zina, and wealth in the lower life. Our Lord, so that they misguide away from your way. In other words, what Allah allowed them to have, the adornments and wealth, have been deployed by Pharaoh and his notables and his community to steer away, to misguide people away from the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Musa continues, Our Lord, obliterate their wealth, and harden their cores, meaning against receiving guidance. Why? Because they do not believe until they see the painful punishment. And therefore the painful punishment for communities from Bani Israel become persistently part of their history. Why every time a Nabi comes with new guidance, if they reject him, they receive the painful punishment. And this is the story that's told again and again in the Quran and in history as a matter of fact. So therefore, there is no doubt about any of these details. So therefore, Musa brought some sort of forcing instrument against his own people and thus he is Jibreel. And this is part of the linguistic semantics of this root Jabara from which we derive Jibreel. So there is more. Yes, there is more evidence. So here we look at the descriptor وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا This is a descriptor for Musa. This occurs in Surah 4, Surah An-Nisa, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts by telling us إِنَّا أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ كَمَا أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَى نُوحٍ وَالنَّبِيِّينَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ etc. etc. And it gets to this point in yellow. This is what I want to focus on because the rest of it, we have covered it in so many different segments before. وَآتَيْنَا دَاوُدَ زَبُورًا وَرُسُلًا And we explained this before when we talked about the fact that the Injil is not a scripture. It refers to our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his role as a Nabi to Bani Israel. What they claim that the Injil is the gospel is just made up fabrication. It's a lie. It's a concoction. The Quran is very clear. It tells us about them, about the Christians who make that claim. In yaquluna illa kadiban. Everything they say is but lies. Here, this is very clear ayah that explains that. Wa atayna Dawuda Zaburan wa Rusulan. Zabur is referred to the instruments of concealment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided as part of the knowledge given to Dawood. Dawood alone, no, wa Rusulan and other messengers. And therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used this instrument where he took one sentence, pay attention, the whole sentence in here is split across two ayat, is split by a separator that separates two ayat. So therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us a technique. So one sentence could be split and the object of the verb in that sentence, which is part of the earlier ayah, is remanded into the following ayah. Here at the end of the same ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does exactly the same thing. وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا رُسُلًا 
So this is a continuation of the same sentence. How do we know this? Because if it was the beginning of a new nominal sentence, Jumla ismiya, it would have said Rusulun, Rusulun with Dhammatain. But here there is a Fathatain. That means it's mansub. That means it's likely to be either an adverb or an object for a verb or an object for a masdar, as we will see. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, and Allah permitted and enabled Musa to speak on his behalf as Jibreel. This is the full interpretation. Many times. Two messengers providing glad tidings and warnings, meaning to Nabiyun. This is exactly what we said all throughout this segment already. So this ayah really gives us a clear indication that Musa is the one who was sent repeatedly to speak on behalf of Allah. How do we know this? Because the verb kallama is different than takallama ma'ahu. So takallama ma'ahu, Allah spoke with him. Allah does not say that in the Quran. Allah says kallamahu, he enabled him to speak. He empowered him to speak. He gave him the criteria to speak. He made him Jibreel. How do we know this? Because takliman, takliman indicates many times, many times. And it's also a masdar. And a masdar, as you know, is referred to as a verb noun or an infinitive noun. In Arabic, when it's followed by another word that's mansub, that word is an object for the masdar. So the masdar plays the role of the verb. So takliman is also like he spoke many times, Musa spoke many times. To whom? To Rusulan, to those who are sent as emissaries or messengers. And those emissaries and messengers brought glad tidings and brought warnings. And those are the Nabiyun. This is a clear description of the Nabiyun. So I know very few books of tafsir and translation got this translation correct. But as you see, the linguistic interpretation and the indication of it makes perfect sense. So now we understand that we have a direct evidence, first rule type of evidence, so to speak, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained clearly that it was Musa, Jibreel, who was given the opportunity to speak again and again and again with criteria provided to him by Allah to many, to many Nabiyun. Very, very clear. And just to understand the word kallama, we refer again to the story of Yusuf and the series that we've covered about the story of Yusuf. Here from Ayah 1254, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about what happened when Yusuf came out of jail and met with the king and was given his new assignment by the king. Remember, in his new assignment, he became the chief of state security and the judge in the marketplace, as we saw in the full interpretation of the surah. So here, before Yusuf assumed this new responsibility, there was a meeting between Yusuf and the king. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes that scene. وَقَالَ الْمَلِكُ أُتُونِي بِهِ أَسْتَخْلِصْهُ لِنَفْسِي فَلَمَّا كَلَّمَهُ قَالَ إِنَّكَ الْيَوْمَ لَدَيْنَا مَكِينٌ أَمِينٌ And the king said, bring him, meaning bring Yusuf from jail to me, so that I can talk to him by myself without anyone else. And when he talked to, this is how I translated it in the series last year during Ramadan, and now we're making an expansion, we're making an elaboration to that interpretation. So it's not talked to, he permitted or enabled him to talk and on his behalf as head of security and judge. Because those are the facts that we know from the story. So therefore, kallamahu, kallamahu in here is providing us this type of semantics. He, the king, said, you are starting this moment, allowed to listen in with us, be part of the inner council. You are given a high position and deemed trustworthy. And we know that Yusuf, from there on, provided leadership to the state security and to judging the affairs within the marketplace. So that's kallamahu, kallamahu. So he brought judgment and he spoke on behalf of the king and was part of the king's inner council. This is how the Quran, through stories, elaborate the terminology of the Quran. So kallam Allahu Musa, that means Allah enabled Musa to have a similar role. That role is called Jibreel. Jibreel is endowed with insights and insider knowledge, so to speak, advanced knowledge that he brings by the permission of Allah to various Nabiyyin. And he also brings judgment. So now we see even more evidence, continuing with more evidence that Jibreel is indeed Musa. Here from this ayah from Surah Al-Baqarah, starting ayah 97. قُلْ مَنْ كَانَ عَدُوًا لِجِبْرِيلِ فَإِنَّهُ نَزَّلَهُ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِكَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ وَهُدًا وَبُشْرًا لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ 
من كان عدوا لله وملائكته ورسله وجبريل وميكال فإن الله عدو للكافرين Say, O oh Muhammad, whoever is an enemy to Jibreel, aduwan li Jibreel, know that he, meaning Jibreel, has made it, meaning the Quran, repeatedly accessible upon your core. فَإِنَّهُ أَيْ جِبْرِيلْ نَزَّلَهُ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِكَ How do we know that this is referring to Jibreel? Because here it says بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ With the permission of Allah. That means it's not Allah himself who brought it down. It is Jibreel who brought it down. By the permission of Allah. As I said, كَلَّمَهُ That means empowered him, enabled him, gave him the criteria, strengthened him, authorized him, relegated to him. All of those meanings are part of كَلَّمَهُ to speak on behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the right knowledge by the permission, as we see in here, by the permission of Allah. مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ He corrects that which is available, which is the concocted and corrupted earlier scripture. وَهُدًا وَبُشْرَى لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ And guidance and glad tidings to the believers. Now this is only part of the mission of Jibreel to provide Huda and guidance and to correct them, the erroneous knowledge, so to speak, and to bring it down upon the qalb of our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All of those are part of the role. What else? There's one more. Man kana aduwan lillahi wa malaikatihi wa rasulihi wa jibreela wa mikal. Whoever is an enemy to Allah, his angels, his messengers, Jibreel and Mikal, then Allah is an enemy to the rejectors. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَدُوٌ لِلْكَافِرِينَ what does the enmity have to do with this after such a beautiful ayah that talks about the revelation of divine knowledge? Because that's also part of the mission of Jibreel, to bring the punishment against the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah is the enemy of those who reject. Who are the rejectors in this case? The rejectors are the ones who reject what Jibreel brought to the Nabiyun, to the prophets of Bani Israel, including our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It makes perfect sense. It fits like a glove. There is nothing missing, nothing loose. Every piece of information matches perfectly and fully integrated with the rest of the Quran as we explain it. Here's another reference to Jibreel in the Quran from Surah 66. In tatuba ilallahi faqad sagat qulubukuma wa in tadahara alayhi fa inna allaha huwa maulahu wa Jibreelu wa salihul mu'mineen wal malaikatu ba'da dhalika zahir. If you cease your plotting for the sake of Allah, then your cores have listened. But if you collude against him, meaning about Muhammad, and we have seen part of this surah in the segment that talks about, did Muhammad marry his servant's wife? If you collude against him, against Muhammad, then know that Allah is his patron, the patron of Muhammad, Mawlahu, the patron of Muhammad. And Jibreel also, and those who toil correctly among the believers. So why is Jibreel brought into this situation? Because those people who were colluding against Muhammad were not the wives of Muhammad. They were other people related to Bani Israel. We will see a lot more detail about that story in a future segment. But the fact that Jibreel is brought into that story is by itself an indication that this is a reference to something Bani Israel did, not the two wives of Muhammad, as we were told in all the books of Tafsir, unfortunately. So Allah is his patron, and Jibreel and those who toil correctly among the believers, Salihul Mu'mineen, Wal Malaikatu Ba'da Dalika Zahir. And then the angels after that are also supporting him, supporting Muhammad. So this is how Jibreel is mentioned in the Quran. It fits beautifully with the explanation that we just provided that Jibreel is Musa returning as an angel, not once, but sequentially and repeatedly to guide all the Nabiyun of Bani Israel. Nabiyun of Bani Israel. Does that mean that Musa will never return as an angel to support others who are followers of the Quran? No, it does not. Musa, of course, returns in different forms. This is one role of his after he actually died in the earth life, he returned as Jibreel for the Nabiyin. But he may, like other Nabiyin and Shuhada, return as angels of the Arsh, angels who help others learn properly through engaging the Quran. Remember, not only he was an expert in the Torah, and thus he was Jibreel, but he was also very knowledgeable and an expert about the Quran. And therefore, Musa, as an angel, may return to help others, inshallah. Inshallah, we are all among those.
So we continue with even more evidence. Ruhul Qudus, Ruhul Qudus, what is Ruhul Qudus? And we translated it as the divine messenger. Al Qudus is from Al Qudus, which is one of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al Qudus is sending Ruh. Ruh is the divine messenger. And we've talked about this many times before. Here we see it in four ayat, just to be brief for this segment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 87, about Isa ibn Maryam, about Isa ibn Maryam, that he gave him al bayinat the instruments for extracting evidence, and we supported him, ayyadnahu bi al qudus We supported him with the divine messenger. We're going to see who that divine messenger is. Again, confirming everything we have said so far in this segment. Here, another ayah that confirms the same thing. وَآتَيْنَا عِيسَى بْنَ مَرْيَمَ الْبَيِّنَاتِ We gave him the al-bayinat and we supported him بِرُوحِ القدس with the divine messenger. Another ayah, again about Isa ibn Maryam. Who is Ruh al-Qudus? Ruh al-Qudus, the divine messenger. And then finally, the same exact word appears for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. قُلْ نَزَّلَهُ رُوحُ الْقُدُسِ It's talking about the Qur'an. Say Muhammad, the divine messenger from the holy, meaning Ruh al-Qudus, made it repeatedly accessible in truth. نَزَّلَهُ It's talking about the Qur'an. بالحق, in truth. لِيُثَبِّتَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَهُدًا وَبُشْرَى لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ In order to give steadiness to those who believed and as guidance and glad tidings, to the submitters. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is clearly explaining the same Ruhul Qudus, Jibreel, who brought down the Quran repeatedly with explanation and provide guidance and glad tidings to those who are referred to as Muslimin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us the same Ruhul Qudus is the one who provided support to Isa, not once, not twice, but three different times, even despite that fact, Isa ended up steering away from what he was taught and supported with by Ar-Ruh Al-Qudus, as we saw in the series of Isa. So the same guide who helped Isa also returned to help Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Again, that is Jibreel. This is exactly what we have explained. Is there more evidence? Yes, there is more evidence. Here, another exclusive marking with irrefutable evidence. The term Risalati, Risalati. Watch this. This is so elegant, so beautiful, so straightforward. There's no doubt about this. Qala, Allah said, Ya Musa, inni istafaituka ala nas. O Musa, I have selected you over other people. Bi Risalati, with my messages. Pay attention to the plural conjugation of this word. Risalati, multiple messages from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to an nas people in general. And Nas in this case is referring to Bani Israel. Wabi kalami and the words or the actual speech from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What's that speech? The Quran itself. The Quran itself. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I've sent you with multiple messages from me, and I've selected you exclusively. Istafaituka. Istafaituka. And we saw this when we studied the story of Maryam and her son Isa. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Maryam, وَإِذْ قَالَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ اصْطَفَاكِ وَطَهَّرَكِ وَاصْطَفَاكِ عَلَى نِسَاءِ الْعَالَمِينَ Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selected Musa exclusively above people with the multiple messages and with the final word. كَلَامِي كَلَامُ اللَّهِ is the Qur'an. It's very clear by itself that there are other links, markings, where the same word occurs four times in the Qur'an. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Ahzab says those who deliver the messages of Allah and they fear him and fear no one else but Allah. And this is referring to those who came before Muhammad. So therefore it's talking about another person, messenger, who came before Muhammad and was brought back to deliver multiple messages. And that was of course Jibreel that we're talking about. Here in this ayah from Surah 72, remember Al-Jinn in Surah 72 is referring to a group from Bani Israel. We've explained this in segment 74, 75, 76. Please refer back to those. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about himself. He's saying he is the exposer of the undisclosed, but he does not expose to such undisclosed matter anyone except someone to whom he provides contentment, that means Muhammad himself, فَإِنَّهُ يَسْلُكُ مِنْ بَيْنِ يَدَيْهِ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِ رَصَلًا But even Muhammad had other observers in front of him and behind him. لِيَعْلَمَ أَنْ قَدْ أَبْلَغُ رِسَالَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposes to people 
that these messengers have delivered the messages, the messages from their Lord, who in this case, it's Jibreel who delivered to Muhammad, whom Allah made content. So Allah made Muhammad content and he sent him Jibreel to expose that Jibreel is the one who delivered multiple messages from their Lord. And then finally here in this ayah 72, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confirms the same concept. قُلْ Say, O Muhammad, إِنِّي لَنْ يُجِيرَنِي مِنَ اللَّهِ أَحَدٍ وَلَنْ أَجِدَ مِنْ دُونِهِ مُلْتَحَدًا إِلَّا بَلَاغًا مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرِسَالَاتِهِ وَمَنْ يَعْصِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَإِنَّ لَهُ نَارَ جَهَنَّمَ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أَبَدًا Say, O Muhammad, no one will shield me against Allah and I shall find not anyone between me and him. Of course, as an excuse, multahadan, as an excuse. So Muhammad is commanded to say, no one will shield me. No one will be between me and Allah, except one person, Balagan, a delivery person, a delivery person from Allah and his messages, وَرِسَالَاتِهِ وَرِسَالَاتِهِ This is referring exactly to Musa, who is again assigned the role of Jibreel. So it's become more and more evident and obvious. And here we have one more evidence. وَاسْأَلْ مَنْ أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رُسُولِنَا وَاسْأَلْ مَنْ أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رُسُولِنَا أَجْعَلْنَا مِنْ دُونِ الرَّحْمَنِ آلِهَةً يُعْبَدُونَ وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا مُوسَى بِآيَاتِنَا إِلَى فِرْعَوْنَ وَمَلَئِهِ O oh, Muhammad, ask some of the messengers whom we sent before you. How is he supposed to ask the other messengers who came before him? He would ask them either in the form of a Qareen or in the form of an angel of the Weltanschung, Malaikatul Arsh, as we explained it. In the case of Muhammad, he was assigned many of them, many of those angels. We will see this more later, inshallah. But here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ask them. So that means he had access to them. Therefore, who is that person to whom this ayah is specifically referring to? The next ayah explains it. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا مُوسَى بِآيَاتِنَا And we have sent Musa with our signs. So right there, this ayah is so obvious, it's screaming at us that Musa is part of the angels that were sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to our beloved so that he learns from them, ask them. So here, therefore, ask Musa clearly. We have one more evidence and then we have a lot more coming in future segments. But this one, وَقَدْ تَعْلَمُونَ So here Musa is saying to his community, وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ يَا قَوْمِ لِمَ تُؤْذُونَنِي وَقَدْ تَعْلَمُونَ أَنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ وَقَدْ تَعْلَمُونَ indicates you may know today, you may know today, today, today and the future. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that Musa said to his community, oh my community, why do you hurt me or hurt my reputation, as we saw it a little earlier, while you may already know that I am a messenger from Allah, or while you may know about the future instances that I came back. So he said this early during his life, regular life, and he says, وَقَدْ تَعْلَمُونَ In the future you may yet know that I am going to return as the emissary from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to you again and again. And he says, قَدْ You may. So he did not confirm 100%. He says, you may. And thus, why do you hurt my reputation? So there is a lot more evidence coming in future segments. This is a brief selection of the evidence that we have for the fact that Musa is himself Jibreel when Musa returned as an angel to train the Nabiyun. There are many Quranic stories that are impacted by this disclosure. This is a huge disclosure with future segments. Inshallah, you will develop additional certainty, additional confidence that the organic Quranic methodology that we follow on this channel is correct, is indeed correct. And that this disclosure is a historic landmark. Why? Because large swath of the Quran will become clearer to us because of this realization. So now I know we're going to get some critics who will ask some questions. Why is it not more obvious in the Quran? If it's such an important disclosure, why is it so concealed and you have to work for it and look for the links and connect this to that and eventually you get to learn that Jibreel is himself Musa. Why is it not more obvious? And the answer is like anything else in the Quran, everything is a special gift, but to those who toil, those who work hard, those who engage, those who receive the direct guidance from Allah. Without the direct guidance, we cannot encompass this beautiful knowledge. And therefore, we don't get the keys such as this disclosure to unlock other parts of the Quran. So it is a special gift to those who toil, like so many other disclosures we have shared before. It is a special designation to as as the irrigators of Al-Ard of the Quran in phase three. 
Another question that I'm sure we're going to get asked, why didn't our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mention this? It should be obvious that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam should tell people, look, this is Musa coming back to teach me and I'm an Abi to Bani Israel. Why wasn't all of this disclosed in the Quran or to us through the narration? Not a single narration says this, by the way. Why? Why didn't Muhammad say this and explain it? And the answer is from the Quran. Watch and learn. وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا مُوسَى الْكِتَابِ and we have allowed Musa to learn the scripture. When? During his first life. We have allowed him to learn the scripture. فَلَا تَكُنْ فِي مِرْيَةٍ مِنْ لِقَائِهِ And thus, Muhammad, addressing Muhammad, do not engage in discussions about meeting him. Very obvious, very clear. لِقَائِهِ Meeting him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that Muhammad was meeting Musa. And don't tell me this is referring to the Isra and that incident where he prayed together or they prayed together on the Temple Mount or any of those things. Has nothing to do with that. Liqa'ihi and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling him, don't go discussing this that you are meeting with Musa. Musa, he was meeting with Jibreel. Very obvious. And just to confirm, وَجَعَلْنَاهُ هُدًا لِبَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ we, we remanded him repeatedly. Who? Jibreel, Musa, right here, as a guidance to Bani Israel. Very obvious. This is why Muhammad did not disclose this fact. He was instructed not to discuss it. Don't engage in discussions about meeting him. Why? Because he was a Nabi. Muhammad was a Nabi. And information coming from a Nabi is specific to the group to whom that Nabi is addressed or sent. In that case, Bani Israel who lived around Medina. Well, what about the believers who came into the Quran system? They're no longer taking information and knowledge from the Nabi. They're supposed to take information and knowledge directly from the Quran as we are doing. As we keep demonstrating, this is segment YT154. Alhamdulillah, every piece of knowledge we've ever offered on this channel comes from the Quran, primarily from the Quran. So he was a Nabi, he was not tasked with interpreting the Quran. He's not tasked with providing this type of disclosures that should be accessible, even though not obvious, not easily in the Quran. Here we have another important question. Did some of the companions know about Jibreel? Were there some people around our beloved Wasallam, some of the close companions who knew this fact and who did not talk about it or talked about it in some ambiguated ways the answer is absolutely yes. Here's a narration from Sahih al-Bukhari, if you believe in narrations. But again, we use the narrations as historical corroboration, secondary evidence, not necessarily primary evidence. All of the knowledge that we provided was primary evidence from the Quran exclusively. This is just corroborating in answer to this question. Did some of the companions know about Jibreel? The answer is yes. Listen to this narration, which mentions the 600 wings. And it's really funny because it teaches you that the companions of our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were funny people. And they found humor in playing on the words and the Abrahamic locution. Watch this. So this is reported by Al-Bukhari, as I said. This is the narration number from Ash-Shibani. He said, I asked this person, Zara, عن قوله تعالى فكان قاب قوسين أو أدنى فأوحى إلى عبده ما أوحى he said أخبرنا عبد الله meaning عبد الله بن مسعود or عبد الله بن عباس either of the two in here he said we were taught by either عبد الله بن مسعود or عبد الله بن عباس that محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم perceived رأى جبريل perceived جبريل not saw جبريل رأى they used that locution and they understood that رأى could possibly mean perceive Perceived Jibreel, who? Muhammad perceived Jibreel, and he had 600 wings, 600 janah. Now, this is really funny because those of you who know that Jibreel is Musa, understand that Musa came to explain the 600 plus legalistic commandments in the original Torah. In the original Torah, to the followers of the Torah, they are supposed to uphold not just 10 commandments, over 600 legalistic halal and haram commandments how to do the kosher kitchen what do the women do after their menses how to deal with children what parts of the animal you're allowed to eat what parts you're not allowed to eat when do you use bread that's leavened when are you not allowed to use bread that's leavened and so on and so forth over 600 detailed legalistic commandments that they're supposed to uphold 
So these legalistic commandments required scriptural evidence. Required scriptural evidence. Janah. This is exactly part of the Abrahamic locution that we use. So in this narration, this companion, Abdullah, whether Abdullah ibn Mas'ud or Abdullah ibn Abbas, is using exactly the same locution, Janah. And he's saying Jibreel, who is Musa, brought or has knowledge of over 600 scriptural evidence for the 600 legalistic commandments in the original Torah. What's funny is that he was saying this about our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam while inside he's probably laughing because he knew people as they did in all the books of Tafsir and on the YouTube channels and all of these lectures that we hear about Jibreel, he has 600 wings and they draw him sometimes with these multiple wings as if he's a bird. You know, this is all the Christian lore, the Christian folklore, the Christian and biblical mythology that was brought from non-Quranic sources and they taught the non-Quranic Islam to followers of the Quran and thus it became very hard for the followers of the Quran to take out this erroneous image from the mind. Instead of teaching them the correct locution of what the word janah means, it does not mean the wing of a bird, it means the scriptural evidence in support of a claim you make. That's what the word janah means. Again, this narration shows us that some of the early companions understood the locution and understood the truth about Jibreel, who has 600 scriptural evidence for his legalistic commandments in the original Torah. By the way, in another narration, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, a close companion, was asked about Jibreel's 600 wings, the same 600 wings mentioned in here. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was asked and he refused to answer. He refused to answer. Why did he refuse to answer? Because as we saw, he knows that in the Quran, Muhammad sallallahu our messenger, was prohibited from discussing the fact that Musa is himself Jibreel. So this companion, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, did not want to elaborate on the 600 wings issue because that may get close to elaborating on knowledge he, the companion, received from a Nabi, our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So all of this evidence leaves one absolutely with no uncertainty that Jibreel is himself Musa. And with this, we come to some conclusions. As I promised you, they're really not to be missed. Important conclusions. First, the famous narration that said, Read Surah Yasin upon your dead, if that narration is true, and I believe it is, is really insightful, and it's really good advice. As we saw from the paragraph where we discussed the story of Musa returning as part of the Mursaleen, and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make him among those who provide the evidence-based knowledge to his own community, that paragraph is part of Surah Yasin. Perhaps our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam instructed us to read Surah Yasin not at the grave sites, but upon those whose cores are dead, meaning explain it to people whose cores are dead. Why? Because understanding that specific paragraph and other paragraphs in Surah Yasin, understanding Surah Yasin in general, including that paragraph, enables us to revive the cores by understanding more and more of the Quran. I hope that's really clear. Another point, the fact that all books of tafsir claim that Surah Ash-Sharh, Surah 94, Alam Nashrah Laka Sadrak, they all claim that it was addressed to Muhammad. This fact demonstrates how negligent they were in linking the simple ayat within the Quran. There is not a single person who ever read or studied the Quran seriously who does not know the dua of Musa? Rabbi shrah li sadri, wa yassir li amri, wahlul uqdatan min Everybody knows this dua, and yet they did not connect it to Surah 94. Alam nashrah laka sadrak. It is so obvious, it's screaming. It is very clear that it's talking about the same person. So therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put that marking and made it so obvious, and yet not a single book of tafsir detected that link and made the connection and concluded that Surah 94, Surah Ash-Sharh, is really not addressing Muhammad. Point number three, the fact that all books of Tafsir paint a mythical image of Jibreel as an angel with wings tells us that they were totally immersed in the Christian folklore and the biblical mythology, as if we need one more confirmation. This is just one more confirmation of how not only they misunderstood the Quran, they misunderstood what they claim to be narrations from our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
Number four, the knowledge about Jibreel opens up large swaths of the Quran and now we can understand a lot more with the permission of Allah. As I told you at the very beginning, I promised you, if you understand this segment in full, you will have access to large portions of the Quran and knowledge about more of the Quran than 99% of all people who ever lived. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed us to get access to this knowledge now so that we can unlock so much more of the Quran and we will see this inshallah in coming segments. And finally, please remember, there are many questions yet to be answered. I know we did not address everything in this segment. This segment is limited on time and therefore we cannot keep going on and on. But there will be more, many more evidence to present inshallah in the near future. I ask that you remain patient and you keep watching future segments. If you have questions, please put them on the comment. Comment anyway, I invite you to comment and to provide your feedback and ask about anything you want. But if you criticize, please know that some of the answers may be provided here. Some of the answers may be provided in future segments. And with this, we come to the closing. Alhamdulillahi alladhi hadana lihada wa ma kunna linahtadi alawla an hadana Allah laqad jaat rusulu rabbina bilhaq. Thank you so much for watching. Salamun alaikum.